Some people take just 10 seconds to fall in love. Some others might take a bit longer, a week for instance, just like it happened with your ex. It takes a bit less than one month for the moon to complete a revolution around the Earth and a lot more to finally deliver your baby. Time is the doom of every living and non-living thing in the cosmos. Of course, some of them persist for long time scales. For instance, trees are living up to 5,000 years. And did you know that it takes the sun something like 230 million years to revolve around the center of the Milky Way? And as with all things, even human life will end one day. A creepy question arises. What will the Earth be like in the next million years? Keep watching the video as we unveil the future of our fragile planet. You will find out what a pity it is for the human lifetime to be so short. The New Pole Star 2000 Years Predicting the future is challenging, especially for complex systems like weather. For instance, despite striving for accuracy, the vast number of variables involved makes it difficult to forecast the climate. Nevertheless, there are some things that we know for sure will happen. In this video, we will focus on them. And just to begin with, the pole star will change in the far future. Stars have always held a special place in human history. They have helped us, inspired us, and provided us with light in the darkness. Ancient sailors in particular relied on the stars to navigate through the vast expanse of the sea. The stars would light up the night sky, giving the sailors a sense of direction and providing them with a reliable source of guidance. The Pole Star, also known as Polaris, holds a unique position in the night sky. It is directly above Earth's North Pole, aligning with Earth's axis. This means that while other stars appear to move across the sky as the Earth rotates, the pole star remains fixed in its position. This makes it an excellent point of reference for navigation and orientation. Sailors would use the position of the pole star to determine their latitude and make sure they were on the right track. The name Polaris derives from the Latin phrase Stella Polaris, meaning pole star. Its significance as a constant point of reference for navigation cannot be overstated. Just like the North Star, Polaris has guided countless sailors, explorers, and adventurers throughout history. Whether sailing the high seas or trekking through uncharted lands, the Pole Star has offered a guiding light and a sense of stability. But one day, Polaris will stop being the guide star, leaving space for Gamma Cephei. Let me tell you why. It's a very well-known fact that a major contribution to astronomy was brought by the Babylonian civilization. One cannot help but admire the Babylonians' contribution to astronomy. In particular, in the late 5th century BC, more than 2,000 years ago, the Babylonians developed the signs of the zodiac. These 12 constellations represent a division of the band through which the moon, sun, and planets travel. It was a significant milestone in the history of ancient astronomy. Imagine the Babylonian astrologers sitting under the starry night sky, trying to make sense of the patterns and movements of the heavenly bodies. With their keen observations and meticulous record-keeping, they were able to create a system that became the foundation for modern astrology. However, even though astrology had a huge role in the future development of astronomy, it is not an exact science. Stars and planets cannot really influence people's lives, and we cannot read the future by looking at them. Let me tell you something more about this. The position of the Sun at the time of our birth determines our star sign which corresponds to a particular constellation. However, the Earth's movement causes the Sun to no longer align with its original constellation for each star sign. This is due to a phenomenon called the precession of equinoxes, where the Earth's polar axis rotates in a cone shape. As a result, the Sun's position with respect to the fixed stars at a particular time of the year will change, and so will the star sign associated with it. For this reason, the pole star, currently Polaris, will also change over time. In 2000 years, Gamma Cephei will become the pole star, followed by Alderamin in 5500 years and then Vega in 14,000 years. Speaking of Vega, we have a lot to talk about. I will tell you something more later in this video. Anyway, in 26,000 years, the pole star will return to Polaris. This cycle occurs because it takes approximately 26,000 years for the polar axis to complete a full cone rotation. 
Ross 248, the closest star to us in 36,000 years. I'm sure you know the closest star to Earth, after the Sun of course, is Proxima Centauri, and it has been for a really long time. Would you shed a tear if I told you that this will change in about 36,000 years? You could find Proxima 4.2 light years away from Earth, in a cosmic region that astronomers have always studied in great detail. We know a lot of stuff about our closest neighbor. For instance, it is a red dwarf, meaning it is smaller than our Sun, and actually is about 100 times less heavy than our star. Just like the Sun, Proxima is still turning hydrogen to helium at its core via nuclear fusion, and it will keep doing so for at least 4 trillion more years. Just for comparison, this is around 300 times the 13.8 billion year age of the universe. This star will eventually end its life as a smoldering white dwarf, lacking the mass sufficient to become a neutron star or a black hole. But way before this happens, Proxima would have lost its primacy and at least for a period of time, we will have a new closest buddy, Ross 248. No, it's not the Ross from the TV series Friends. It is another red dwarf. In about 36,000 years, it will get as close as 2.8 light years from Earth, and it will remain so for the next 6,500 years, when it will start to move away from us. In the meantime, Proxima will continue to approach the Sun for the next 26,700 years, when it will reach a distance of just 3.11 light years, establishing its cosmic dominance once again. Rivers, lakes, and waterfalls. 50,000 years. The Earth's rivers, lakes, and water complex will undergo significant changes in the distant future. Over a period of 50,000 years or more, many landscapes will be transformed. Some lakes will completely evaporate and rivers will alter their paths due to erosion. Waterfalls will also be affected. A notable example is the famous Niagara Falls, which has been a popular honeymoon destination for over a century. Niagara Falls was formed approximately 12,000 years ago during the late Pleistocene period. Since then, it has been subjected to the forces of erosion. As the falls erode, they gradually move upstream, eventually disappearing into Lake Erie. The erosion process occurs because the water wears away the softer rock at the base of the cliff, creating a turbulent pool below the waterfall. As the base erodes, the old cliff base collapses and a new edge forms slightly upstream. The rate of erosion depends on factors such as the volume of water flowing over the falls, the height of the drop, and the composition of the underlying rocks. Niagara Falls is notable for its exceptionally high volume of water. In fact, one-fifth of the world's fresh water flows over the falls from the Great Lakes Superior, Huron, Michigan, and Erie, eventually emptying into Lake Ontario. It is the second largest waterfall in the world. Based on the current rate of erosion, Niagara Falls is expected to disappear into Lake Erie in approximately 23,000 years. In short, the Earth's rivers, lakes, and water complex will experience significant transformations in the far future. Despite their grandeur, all natural features are subject to change over time. New supernovae and new constellations, 100,000 years. Let's make a step further into the future. What can we expect to change in 100,000 years from now? Everything gets really exciting here. First of all, think about this. Just like all the planets in the solar system move around the Sun, also the Sun itself and all the stars in the Milky Way orbit around the galactic center. Now, of course, a galaxy is much, much bigger than just the solar system. We can therefore expect that it will take a star a huge amount of time to complete just one orbit around the center of the galaxy. How much? Well, astronomers know that the Sun takes 230 million Earth years. Yes, you heard it right, 230 million years. It's incredible, right? Therefore, in 100,000 years, the Sun would have moved a lot with respect to where it is now, and the constellations and stars we see will change correspondingly as a result of this movement. So we will see huge differences in the constellations, and this is really amazing to think about, even though it is not always taken into account in sci-fi movies. For instance, if a movie is set in the past, say one million years ago, a good scientific director will take care of this by completely changing the shapes of constellations appearing in the scenes. Of course, you will find something completely different even in the case you go to the future with your brand new time capsule. 
The combined action of the sun's and other stars' movement in the Milky Way makes it impossible for our sky to always stay the same. It is an ever-changing environment, and as such, it owns an intrinsic beauty, the beauty of the cosmos. 100,000 years is also enough time for some stars to literally die. These stars will collapse first and then create a shock wave that will propagate in the universe, resulting in a supernova. And if we are lucky enough, we will be able to see the supernova in our skies. One of the stars that might go supernova in the next 100,000 years is V.Y. Canis Majoris. V.Y. Canis Majoris is a red hypergiant and among the largest known stars, as well as among the brightest in the Milky Way. It is located in the constellation Canis Major, about 3,000 light years from us, and has a radius of about 2,000 times that of the Sun, even though it is still a bit uncertain. If this were the case, and if this huge star were to replace the Sun, its surface would extend well beyond the orbit of Saturn. Despite being one of the brightest stars in the Milky Way, V.Y. Canis Majoris is not visible to the naked eye. Nevertheless, had it exploded as a supernova, we would see it shine very bright. So who knows, maybe this huge star has already ended its life, and the light from the supernova is already traveling towards the Earth, waiting to fall inside the tube of a telescope. Or maybe we will have to wait a long time before it actually dies. In the meantime, let's keep it curious. Hey you, if you're still watching this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel so as to not miss our channel's newest content. Cupid and Belinda Collision, 100,000 years Uranus, the wonderful planet that really stands out in the solar system, has not one, not two, but a whopping 27 moons. Talk about being popular. Five of these moons are quite big, while the rest are tiny little things. It's like having a bunch of rowdy puppies running around in space. Now, what's really cool about these moons is that they are named after characters from Shakespeare's plays. Can you imagine being a moon and having such a fancy name? Take a bow over on in Titania. You were the first to be discovered back in 1787 by the famous astronomer William Herschel. You must have felt like celebrities of the night sky. But here's the catch. With so many moons all squished up close to Uranus, you'd think they would constantly be bumping into each other, right? It's like a cosmic version of bumper cars. Luckily, astronomers have been keeping an eye on these moon shenanigans, and they've discovered that the most important things to watch out for are the moon's orbits and their masses. Now, because these moons are so tiny and not very bright, there's not much we know about them other than their sizes and where they hang out when telescopes decide to take a peek. So scientists did what scientists do best. They ran a bunch of simulations, and guess what? They found out some hilarious news. Two of the inner moons, Cupid and Belinda, are on a collision course. In about 100,000 years, which is like forever in human time, but trust me, just a blink in space time, these mysterious moons will crash into each other, creating a spectacular collision. It will be like watching a cosmic show. And the aftermath? A magnificent ring will form around Uranus like a celestial fashion statement. Vega, the new brightest star, 100,000 years. We said the Sun is moving in the galaxy, and with it, all planets, even the Earth. This will have strong consequences on the brightness of stars in the long term. Nowadays, we know the brightest star in the sky is Sirius. However, in some 290,000 years from now, this will change because we are moving in Vega's direction at the crazy speed of 12 miles per second. At that point, the apparent magnitude will reach its peak. Vega will remain the brightest star seen from Earth for approximately 270,000 years. As you can understand, Vega will first take over Polaris, becoming the new northern star, and then it will overcome Sirius's brightness. Such a conceited star. The end of human culture and life? 500,000 years. Have you ever wondered what the world would look like in half a million years? Well, let me paint you a picture. Imagine all of the magnificent structures we humans have built over the centuries, like the Colosseum in Rome or the Eiffel Tower in Paris, all vanished into thin air. Poof! They would be gone just like that. Even Times Square, the Statue of Liberty, and the White House would be nothing more than distant memories, unless someone takes the time to maintain them. Now you might be thinking, what on earth could withstand the test of time? Well, hold on to your hats because I've got the answer for you. Rocks and metals. 
Yes, those trusty old elements have proven themselves to be quite the survivors. Archaeologists have actually unearthed tools created by our ancient ancestors dating back to 500,000 years. Can you believe that? It's like stepping into a time machine and finding a caveman's toolkit. These tools, mostly made of stone, have withstood the ravages of time and given us a glimpse into our past. Just imagine if an alien civilization were to stumble upon our planet in the future. They would most likely find remnants of our civilization made from these very elements. It's like leaving a calling card for extraterrestrial visitors. Hey aliens, we were here, and we were pretty handy with rocks. So next time you're out and about, why not pick up a rock and build something magnificent? Who knows, maybe you'll become the Picasso of the Stone Age. And who wouldn't want their legacy to live on in the annals of alien history? Plus, think about all the future archaeologists who will dig up your masterpiece and marvel at your handiwork. It's like the ultimate prank on future generations. The world may change dramatically in the next half million years, but some things are bound to stick around. Rocks and metals are like the cockroaches of the building world. They just won't go away. So get creative, leave your mark, and who knows, maybe one day aliens will stumble upon your creation and have a good chuckle at our primitive ways. Anyway, it's not all rocks and metals, or maybe it is. In half a million years from now, there's a good chance the Earth will experience the impact of an asteroid of about one kilometer in diameter. Indeed, statistical studies inform us that this type of impact happens about twice every million years. Had an asteroid this big hit the Earth, there would be significant damage. It would cause widespread destruction and could trigger tsunamis, earthquakes, and wildfires. The exact extent of the damage would depend on several factors, such as the speed and angle of impact as well as the location of the impact. Geography and Auroras – 1 million years The mark left by an asteroid is usually a big hole in the ground called a crater. One of the most famous craters on Earth is the Meteor Crater in Arizona. It's really big, about 1,200 meters wide and 170 meters deep. This crater was made 49,000 years ago when an asteroid about 46 meters wide crashed into the Earth. It's the most well-preserved crater we have, but in a million years, it will be gone. It will all be eroded and there won't be any sign that it was ever there. In a million years, things will be different on Earth. The climate will have changed a lot. The North and South Poles might not be where they are now. This will make the Earth's magnetic field change too. The magnetic field is what makes auroras appear in the sky. It's like a beautiful light show, but with the poles in a different place, the auroras will be seen in different parts of the world. Over this long time, the continents will also move. It's like they're slowly drifting around. This is called plate tectonics. It changes the shape of the Earth's surface. So in a million years, the continents will look different. But it won't be all easy. Moving continents can cause earthquakes and tsunamis. Those are really scary natural disasters. For example, California might move towards Alaska. Imagine the chaos that would bring. But even with all of this changing and moving, the universe is still amazing. Our Earth is just a tiny part of it. There are so many incredible things out there. So even if there are earthquakes or tsunamis in a million years, we should still appreciate the beauty of the universe we live in. Human and AI Evolution – 1 Million Years According to some scientists, humans in one million years will likely have merged with artificial intelligence and machines, resulting in a new hybrid species that blurs the line between biological and synthetic beings. This prediction is based on the observation that the distinction between humans and machines has already started to blur on shorter timescales. In terms of solving major problems and answering key questions, artificial intelligence and machines will play an increasingly important role. With the advancements in technology, AI will have the capability to process and analyze vast amounts of data, allowing it to provide insights and solutions to complex issues that humans may struggle with. This could range from finding cures for diseases to solving environmental challenges. However, the human role in this future scenario should not be underestimated. While machines may possess superior computational power, humans will still have their unique qualities to contribute. Creativity, empathy, and moral reasoning are just a few examples of traits the machines currently lack and may never fully replicate. 
humans will continue to be responsible for shaping the ethical framework and ensuring that the decisions made by AI align with human values. As for whether this future will be dystopian or not, it's difficult to say with certainty. Like any technological advancement, AI and machines can both be beneficial and detrimental depending on how they are used. The key lies in ensuring that the development and deployment of AI are done ethically and responsibly. There are concerns about the potential loss of jobs due to automation, but history has shown that technological advancements often create new job opportunities as well. Society will most likely need to adapt. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Do you think we missed anything? Let us know in the comments below. We'll see you next time on the channel.